Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at West Kilbride Parish Church. Well, here we are again in the man's garden. Who would have thought it? Uh, after 10 months when we did this uh, back in March uh, 2020, I don't think we would have thought we'd be back in the man's garden in January 2021. But here we are, and for good reason, as cases are increasing throughout the UK and in Scotland. And so, uh, obviously, during this period, uh, churches have been closed. So uh, we're back in the, the man's garden for uh, a few more weeks. But lovely to have you with, with us this morning, and I do hope that you're keeping well and keeping safe. Just one or two intimations before we begin our service together. Firstly, just to say about our four o'clock service, obviously we can't hold the four o'clock service in the church, uh, but we are doing it in Zoom this afternoon. So if you do need the details for that, uh, time, uh, family time together with fun, uh, some singing, some songs, uh, different bits and bobs, uh, then please get in touch with me and I'll give you the login details. And also just to say about our Alpha course, uh, we are running Alpha online from the 21st of January, that's a Thursday evening, going to run it weekly uh, on a Thursday evening at 7.45. Uh, so if you are interested in that, uh, then please do get in touch with me. But let's come before the Lord in worship together. The psalmist says this in Psalm 9. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Let's begin our worship this morning. And we're going to sing together, Great is Your Faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with you. You change us not your compassions, they fail not. As you Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to mercy and love. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. sin and a peace everlasting your own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow bless 
Let's join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we are grateful that we can come before you this day. We thank you that you are the sovereign Lord, that you have everything in your hands and that nothing surprises you. And so, Lord God, we come before you with faith on our hearts and praise on our lips, thanking you for the God that you are a God in whom we can trust. Lord God, we recognise that in our world at this present time there is turmoil. There's turmoil in our nation. Perhaps there's turmoil in our own hearts. But we thank you that we can be still before you, knowing that you're a God of compassion, a God of justice, a God of peace, a God in whom we can trust. And we pray that that might give us encouragement in our own souls this day. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we recognise that our own hearts often turn away from you. Our own thoughts are distracted by things that are unworthy, that we say things that later we regret, that we think things that are not worthy of your praise. And we ask for your forgiveness. We recognise, Lord God, that so often we think only about ourselves rather than about you and about eternal things. Father, as we confess our sin before you, we are grateful that in your mercy and in your grace, you have given us a great saviour in Jesus. We thank you for Christmas, which we have just celebrated, when we think about Jesus coming into the world, God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us. And we pray, Lord God, as we understand all you have done in Jesus in giving us this great Saviour, this perfect Saviour, that we might put our faith and trust in him. Because we thank you that when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, then our sins, though they be like scarlet, they are made as white as snow. We thank you that when you look upon us, when we believe in Jesus, then you see the righteousness of Christ rather than our own sinfulness. We thank you that when we believe in Jesus, then we are a new creation, for the old has gone and the new has come. And so, Lord God, with that encouragement and with that assurance, we come before you this day and we lay ourselves simply before you. We pray that we might be the people you've called us to be in this situation you have set us, whether in West Kilbride, or Largs, Skelmerley, or the Three Towns, or whether further abroad. Lord God, we recognise that nothing is by accident, and the place where we currently are is the place where you have set us. Lord God, may we be good ambassadors for you. May we be good witnesses for you in the place you have set us. And may we live our lives to your glory and to your praise. We recognise, Lord God, that these are difficult times, Difficult times for many families whose loved ones are in hospital, those who've been affected by COVID-19 restrictions. And perhaps even as we come before you this morning, Lord God, we find ourselves torn or in turmoil or just finding ourselves really wondering where things are going. Yeah, but Lord God, help us to keep trusting in you. And Lord God, we recognise even within the church we're not even able to meet in the building at this present time because of restrictions, but we thank you that we can meet in this way, that we can meet together virtually 
and we can focus uh, upon you and give thanks to you. So, Heavenly Father, hear these our prayers and also the quiet, silent prayers of our own hearts. And hear us now as we pray together with the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. And you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. Who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Bible reading today comes from the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 33 and verses 1 through to 6. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you, and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. But I will not go with you, because you are a stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn, and no one put on any ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, you are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments, and I will decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. Amen. God will bless this reading from his holy word. Let's join together once more in prayer with our prayer of intercession. Lord God, what a privilege it is to carry everything to you in prayer. And we thank you, Lord God, that with everything that's happening in our world, that nothing is hidden from you, and we can lay everything before your throne of grace. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this day, we are very concerned about what's happening with the coronavirus pandemic, and we do pray for our own nation at this time. We see on our news screens how high cases have been each day. We see there are many people who are losing their lives also. And we ask, Lord God, that you would be merciful. We thank you, Lord God, for the lockdown restrictions that have been brought in as an attempt to try and curb the virus. And we pray that this would be successful. And we do thank you, Lord God, for the vaccine program we thank you for the many who have already been vaccinated and we pray for the logistics of vaccinating everyone in the nation uh, that that would be done soon and would be done well. Heavenly Father, we do remember those who are suffering though at this time. We remember those who are in hospital and we ask for your healing hand to be upon them. We remember families who have lost loved ones and to know that pain of loss inside, we ask that you would also surround them with your love and with your care. We pray, Lord God, for the NHS and frontline staff. And we thank you for all doctors and nurses who are working in our hospitals. And we pray that our hospitals won't be overwhelmed at this time. We pray that nurses and doctors would be kept safe. And we pray that they would be able to get appropriate rest as is needed to. We pray, Heavenly Father, also for other situations affected by coronavirus. We pray for our education system, especially as some pupils go back uh, tomorrow. 
We pray, Lord God, for teachers as they teach online and classroom assistants and all those who are involved in uh, school hubs. Uh, we pray that you would watch over them and sustain them. We pray, Heavenly Father, for family units, especially if where parents are worried about homeschooling. And we pray especially for those pupils who have been affected for who this is an important year because of they would have been sitting exams this year, perhaps, and they're worried about their future. We ask, Lord God, that you would also be with them at this time. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our whole world in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. We pray for nations that have been particularly affected, and we pray that the vaccine would reach those who need it most. We ask that you would be merciful in this situation. Heavenly Father, as we think of our world, we pray for places in our world where there has been recent difficulty and violence. We remember the United States after all the political turmoil there in this past week, with the four who lost their lives as well. Lord God, we pray that the Constitution would be honoured there, and Lord God, you would bring a sense of peace and restore a sense of dignity uh, to the nation. We pray, Heavenly Father, for places where there has been difficulty for many years now. We continue to remember Syria, with all those who have been forced to leave their homes because of violence there. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would be merciful. We continue to pray for the migrant crisis and those who have been forced to flee their homes in desperation. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, the situation in Nigeria, where many Christians are being executed and harmed at the hands of Boko Haram. We pray that you would stay the hand of evil and Lord God that you would be merciful to Christians in that nation in Nigeria, that you would help them and support them and sustain them. And we remember our Christian brothers and sisters all around the world thanking you for the worldwide church of which we are a part. We particularly remember believers in China and in Indonesia, and in Burma, and in North Korea, places where it's so difficult to be a Christian, may they also know your presence with them at this time. We do remember the church in our own nation at this present time. We recognise this is a difficult time for the church, where the church cannot physically meet for another month or so. And we pray that you would continue to sustain us, and that as believers in you, that we would consistently and constantly look towards the Lord Jesus and put our faith and trust in him. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we pray for our own personal situations. We remember those who are on furlough, those who are concerned about their finances, those who have lost their jobs. We remember those who are in hospital for other reasons other than COVID-19 those who are awaiting treatment and perhaps that treatment has been delayed. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would be with them. Heavenly Father, during this time of turmoil, we pray that as a nation, we would look towards you, we would call out to you, and that we might find you, and that you might revive your people once more as they put their faith and trust in Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for those in authority over us, as you've called us to do, Remembering our Prime Minister and First Minister, the Cabinet and the Scottish Government and all the difficult decisions that they have to make, may you sustain them and watch over them and help them. So Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can bring everything before you in prayer. And we ask that you would hear all these our prayers now and also the quiet, silent prayers of our own hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Lord, oh.
Let's turn to God's word now in Exodus chapter 33. The beginning of a new year is always a time to reflect, to reflect on the year past and to think about the year that is to come. And of course, at this time of year, many people, of course, make new year resolutions, don't they? And resolutions are made to make improvements in someone's life. People make resolutions because they want to lose weight, because they feel too heavy. They want to make resolutions to give up smoking because they want to improve their health, for example. Or people make resolutions to uh, do new skills uh, or to go go to new places uh, to perhaps enrich their lives. Now, this time of year, I usually spend some time planning for the year ahead thinking through services and different things that might be happening in the church. And obviously with all that happened in 2020 and all that's happening at the beginning of 2021, this has been difficult. How can we plan for months and months ahead when we don't really know what's happening? And usually on this second Sunday of January, I would spend some time perhaps focused upon our vision statement or focused on what our theme might be uh, for this year. You'll remember uh, that last year in 2020, uh, that our theme and our focus was prayer and invitation. But this morning I want to do something just a little bit different, and just to, to give you some encouragement and some challenge as we move into 2021. And this morning I want to take some time to look at this passage from Exodus chapter 33. Now, it might not be the most obvious passage to think about at the beginning of a new year, but it does have an important principle in it and a challenge to us. And I thought that might be helpful to us as we go into 2021. Now, the context of this passage in Exodus 33 is that the Israelites are in the wilderness, having been freed from slavery in Egypt by the Lord, under the leadership of Moses. And at this point in the story, Moses has been up Mount Sinai, receiving the law, the Ten Commandments, and all the other laws from the hand of the Lord. And as he's doing that, the rest of the Israelites are waiting down below. However, Moses is away for quite a bit of time. He's away for at least 40 days and 40 nights. And so as they are wont to do, the Israelites quickly turn away from the Lord. They lose patience, waiting for Moses, saying they don't know what's happened to this fellow who led them all the way from Egypt. And so they fall into sin. Aaron, Moses' brother, the priest at that point, makes two golden calves, and the people fall into idol worship. And when Moses finally comes down the mountain with the two tablets in his hands containing the Ten Commandments, He finds the horrendous situation where the Israelites have fallen into idol worship, and very quickly at that. And Moses obviously is horrified. He he throws down the, the tablets, and he goes back to the Lord to confess his great sin and to ask forgiveness for the people. And the Lord brings plague on the people as a punishment for what they have done. Now this brings us to the short passage that we read today. Because in this passage, we see the Lord telling the people to move and to go up into the promised land. You see, one of the reasons that the Israelites were liberated from Egypt was to go to the promised land. This land flowing with milk and honey. The land promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And as the Lord gives the instruction to go up to the promised land, he says that he will send his angel before the Israelites to drive out 
the people in the land, because obviously there were people living in the land at that moment in time. But crucially, the Lord says that though the people are to go up to this land flowing with milk and honey, though the Lord is sending an angel before them, the Lord says that he himself will not go. He will not go with them because they are a a stiff-necked, in other words, a, a stubborn and sinful people. And because the Lord is holy, he's, he's concerned that he might, he might destroy them on the way. And so he says that he's not going with them. And so in many ways, it might be a mercy that the Lord is not going with the Israelites, because that means at least the Israelites will survive. But what we really want to concentrate on today is the Israelites' reaction to what the Lord says. You see, remember here that the Israelites have been wandering in the desert. They've been moaning about their lack of food and lack of water. They've even thought at one time about going back into slavery in the land of Egypt. And so when they hear these words, that they were to go up into the land, the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, and before them would would go an angel who would drive out all the nations there, you would think that they would be quite pleased. You know, it's great. We've come out of slavery in Egypt. We've had not a great time in the wilderness. And now finally we're going up into land. Wonderful. That sounds great. You might think that they would be ready to pack up their bags and just to go, finally going to the promised land. But their reaction is actually very different. And quite telling. You see, when Moses reports what the Lord has said about the people being stiff-necked and how he won't go with them for fear of destroying them, the reaction of the Israelites is to mourn and to be distressed. Now the question is, why? Why would they mourn? After all, God is giving them the land that, that, that was promised to them. Why would they mourn? Why would they be distressed? The reason is, I think, that there is a sudden realization that going up to this wonderful land, even with an angel going before them, was nothing compared to having the presence of God. You see, they begin to see what a a terrible, appalling thing sin is in the sight of God. They glimpse something of the, the holiness and the majesty of God, and that there is mourning as they realize how holy God is, and there is shame. And despite God sending an angel before them, there was no substitute for God himself. And this is the heart of the matter, isn't it? You see, it's when we're fully awakened in our soul, as we see things as they truly are, we realize there is nothing so serious as to be without the presence of God. You see, despite all that's been promised, the Israelites by their actions are saying, Lord, if you're not coming with us, we don't want to go. Which, of course, is why Moses petitions the Lord later in this chapter and says, Lord, we need you to come with us. You see, what is the value of the promised land? What's the value of having possessions if God is not with them? They realized that the presence of God was infinitely more important than anything else. Now, of course, it's a short step, isn't it, to apply this passage to our own lives and to the church. And it's a challenge to us, isn't it, to keep God front and center. You see, we might appear to have outward prosperity and affluence. The church at one level might be doing well or at least have a lot of activity going on. But the important question is, is God in the midst? Is he really among us? Are we aware of his glorious presence as individuals and as the church? You see, this is what got to the Israelites. And what they effectively were saying to God was that the promised land is no use to us. 
milk and honey is of no value. We're not interested in these enemies that are going to be destroyed by this angel. Lord, we want you. That's what's most important. And that's the challenge this year. With all the turmoil already, the challenge for us and the question for us is, do we know God? Is he in our life? Is he effectively in our camp? Is he in the church? Or are you effectively travelling on with God at a distance, strengthened by angels perhaps, but not having the presence of Almighty God? You see, in their actions, the people repented. And the ultimate aim of repentance is to realise that nothing else matters except my relationship with God. You see, notice what happens in this passage. The Lord instructs the people to take off their ornaments. Ornaments being their earrings and their, their necklaces. Why? Probably because it was the ornaments, and out of these ornaments, the earrings and the necklaces, that the golden calves had been made. And so the Lord says, strip away your ornaments. And the Israelites do. A symbol, perhaps, that they were turning away from what they'd done before. And when their ornaments were stripped away, only God remained. Now, what about us at the beginning of 2021? Do we have ornaments that we need to strip away? Come to the Lord. He's better by far. And we cannot do anything without his presence. A number of people have said to me recently that they don't know how they would get through or how they would have got through 2020 without having the Lord in their life. If I'm quite honest, I don't know how I'm going to get through 2021 without the Lord with me. We need the presence of the Lord. This year, I encourage you, cultivate that relationship with the Lord. Know of his presence and pray in the church that we would know the Lord in our midst in a very real way. There's so much we can do in the church, so much activity that we can have. But unless the Lord is there, then we do it in vain. The land of milk and honey may be attractive, but the presence of the Lord is better by far. Shall we just join together in prayer? Let's pray. Loving Lord God, we thank you for your word to us this day. And we thank you that you are a God who is holy and majestic, a God of justice, a God who cannot abide sin in his sight. We thank you for the mercy that you showed to the Israelites, that you said you would not go with them because you might destroy them. But Lord God, we thank you for the reaction of the Israelites. That they mourned, that they were in great distress because you said you wouldn't go with them. That they stripped away their ornaments as you had called them to do. And all that was left was that relationship with you. Lord God, in our own lives, we recognise that there is a place for repentance. Because we are all sinners who are in need of your grace. And Lord God, as we look at our own lives, perhaps we realise that we have ornaments that need to be stripped away. We ask, Lord God, that you would give us the courage to strip away those ornaments, no matter how precious they might be to us, because we know that you are much more precious, because you are the pearl of great price, the treasure of great cost. Lord God, we pray in the midst of the turmoil, of last year and at the beginning of this year, that we would know of your presence because we cannot go anywhere or do anything without you. We recognise our need of you. And so, Lord God, we commit ourselves to you this morning. We commit ourselves as individuals. We commit ourselves to you as the church. We ask that you would go before us and you would watch over us and you would bless us. For we pray these things. In Jesus' name. 
and for his sake. Amen. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. So we share As I intimated last week, um, this morning we will be celebrating communion together. And when I announced it last week, I didn't expect that we wouldn't be able to celebrate that in the building with some people physically present. Uh, although I did say uh, that those who are joining online uh, should have their elements uh, of bread and wine uh, ready to celebrate virtually. But we're all going to do it uh, virtually this morning. And at the beginning of a new year, it's important that we come back to what is central in our faith and to come back to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, paying the price for our sin, that we might know forgiveness and that we might know newness of life. And so it's good that we can sit, share in the Lord's Supper together. 
Let's hear these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Now this is the table of the Lord. All who believe and trust in the Lord Jesus as Lord and Saviour are welcome to join and partake of these elements of bread and wine, celebrating all that Jesus has done for us by dying on the cross and then rising again in glory. So as we come round the table today, let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can join together around the table of the Lord. And we thank you that in sharing in this sacrament together, then we can think through all that our faith means to us, that we can think through all that Jesus has done for us. We thank you especially for Jesus coming into the world, laying his glory by and coming down into the darkness of our world as the light of the world. And we thank you that the darkness will never overcome the light. We thank you for Jesus' teaching and his ministry, which displayed your glory and showed who he was, no ordinary man, but the Son of God, the Saviour, the Messiah that we need. We thank you for Jesus dying on the cross at Calvary, his body broken and his blood shed, that we might know forgiveness and that we might come into your very presence, covered by the righteousness of Christ. But we thank you also, Lord God, that on the third day, Jesus rose again in glory. And because he is risen, we too have the hope of the resurrection. And in sharing this sacrament today, we are so grateful that we look forward to that day when we will be with you forever and ever in glory. So Heavenly Father, Meet with us this morning as we share in these elements together. And we pray that you would bless these elements set apart for this holy use. That in receiving them you would might nourish us through your Holy Spirit. So Father, bless us, watch over us, in Jesus' name. Amen. We do this together in obedience to Christ's example and command. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and thereafter he'd given thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, after su supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. So let's take and eat. This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Do this and remember him. Take and drink. This is the blood of the covenant sealed by Christ's blood. Drink this and remember him. peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's join together in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us at the table of the Lord, where we have remembered Jesus, proclaimed him, and we look forward to that day when he will return again in glory. Lord God, even though we're not physically present with one another, we thank you that we can share in this sacrament together, that we can remember all that our faith means. We can remember all that you, Lord God, are and all that you have done. That in Jesus we see the depth of your love and your care for us. So Heavenly Father, as we've received these elements this morning, we pray that you would nourish us. Through them we pray. So Father, watch over us now. In Jesus' name. Again, a big thank you for joining us for our service this morning. Please, again, remember our four o'clock service. And if you do want to join on Zoom for that, uh, then please simply get in touch for the details. Uh, we've not had an evening reflection for the last couple of weeks, uh, but our evening reflection and time of prayer will be back on again uh, this evening online in the usual places. Uh, that happens at 6.50 and we join together in prayer at 7 o'clock. So again, a big thank you for joining us today. Let's just finish now uh, with a blessing. And now go in peace, go in joy, go in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.